wanting to speak to Lakewood United about the state of the school district. So we look forward to that. So since we have a busy schedule here and students need a certain amount of time to do justice to their topic, uh, please keep the self-introductions brief. And maybe we'll start with John in the corner there. Uh, John Huber, treasurer of Lakewood United. If any members are present who haven't paid their current dues, I will be seeing them after the meeting. Uh, I have three cards here. I think everybody signed. Jack Averill, Hugh Hedges, and Lee Applegate. If you haven't signed their Christmas cards, raise your hand and I'll make sure you get their cards for your signature. Is there anyone here who has not signed? Okay, well, so we'll pass these around. Please sign accordingly. Uh, that's it. I had other. <laughs> <laughs> Becky Huber, Lakewood Historical Society. Priscilla Huber, retired Air Force. Richard Meyer, retired. My French bed, went to City Council. Okay, so go ahead. Ron Garrison, Denise's wife. Great, great. Kevin John Wallstrom, and I do represent one of our technical colleagues. Kevin McKelly, not retired, community volunteer, uh, board member for Lakewood United, uh, Friends of Lakewood Library, and Lakewood Presbyterian Church. Mark Baker, Lakewood Presbyterian. Jim Taylor, Lakewood Historical Society, and uh, keep Lakewood beautiful, but still trying to be retired. <laughs> Chris Coffin, Lakewood Historical Society, Lakewood United Board, and uh, had an exciting five days, and my brain seems to be working better these days. It's nice to be able to understand that. Lynn Gracie, Friends of Lakewood Library. Ruth Steven, Friends of Lakewood Library. Ernest Teller, Judge of the Lakewood and University Place Municipal Courts and on the board of Lakewood United as well as uh, Lakewood Playhouse. Good, thank you. And Dr. Phil has spoken to us before and given us tips on public speaking and uh, he invited me to speak to his class uh, a month or so ago. I really appreciated that opportunity and uh, also had the the pleasure of being critiqued by his students. <laughs> so, now you will get to hear the students and see how well they pay attention in his class. So I will turn it over to Phil. Uh, all these mics supposedly work, so try that and see. Uh, yep, better turn it on. Try to use this and we'll working? Yes. In our classes, one of the terminologies that I use when I'm critiquing the students is a 27 cent word. They often ask, the first time they get a critique back to me, what does that mean? I tell them that a 27 cent word is like a word that's worth a quarter, except with inflation it's gone up in value. So a 27 cent <laughs> word is a word that you might not hear in casual conversation in the cafeteria and that sort of place. So it's a sophisticated culture kind of word. You may have noticed on your schedule there that the title for this morning's presentation is CPTC Salmagundi. Salmagundi is a 27 cent word, I think. I heard it about 15 years ago for the first time. I thought Robin would appreciate it and would know it, which he did. If you're not familiar with that, it is, I believe, a kind of stew. So it's a mixture, it's a, it's a pastiche. And that, that's mixing language. It's a collection. I'm really pleased that we're going to have the Salmagundi of Clover Park Technical College student speakers this morning. I would like to recognize again the pleasure I have with Robin, having been here a couple of years ago to speak to you, share some thoughts about public speaking, and also I want to thank you again, Robin, for taking time out of your schedule to come and address our class. This is highly practical, very useful. He, he gave the students advice about how to get into the job. There's hardly anything more valuable than that in today's world, is there? <coughs> I'm also pleased to have Two of our other associates here, Nathan Boblitz is going to be our videographer, as you can see. This experience for our students is really important because a public speaking class is great for teaching people how to speak to each other, 
But public speaking is not really speaking to public speaking students, is it? The students who are here this morning are getting perhaps their first taste. No, I'm not asking them individually. Maybe not their first taste. I'm not their first taste of speaking to an audience that is not composed only of their fellow students. This is a great opportunity for them. I hope it will be useful to you also. Robin has wisely suggested that the students speak about topics that you have heard about in the last four or five years. So it will be a refresher for you as well as some more information for them. I'll introduce them here. Oh, and also, I, I hope you realize how much we respect what Lakewood United is doing. The voluntary service you're putting in, the networking you're doing, the support that you're providing for all of the community activities. So it's, it's a fine opportunity for our students to witness that. Our first speaker, I believe you have a sheet that has a photograph here also, has been praised by her fellow students. She didn't know I was going to ask the fellow students for anything to say about her. I did this for each of the students. Tanisha Woods is described by, by her fellow students as a sweetheart, <laughs> thoughtful, soft-spoken, friendly, and dedicated to her relationship. Uh, I'm assuming that that relationship is right here, represented in, in the room. Tanisha's topic, as you can see, is where has all the water gone? Tanisha. Thank you, Dr. Phil. Good morning, Tom. What do you do? We use that on a lecture on a program or something. Let me adjust it here. I assume all of you would have a glass of water sitting in front of you by now. <laughs> so I'm gonna get ready to start. Do any of you know the importance of the glass of water sitting in front of you today? Do you know how much water is worth in other countries? Well, I have a handy dandy chart to show you just how much water is worth in other countries here in the United States and Columbia, London as well. And I will pass this around so you guys can take a better look. <coughs> there are major problems happening in the United States and in other countries as far as Honduras, Bangladesh, and Ethiopia, India as well. Hi, my name is Tanish Woods, and today I'll be talking to you about the water issues here in the United States and in other countries as well. I will be talking to you about the reality of the issue, the three main points we're affected by, and what we all can do to help. Today, one of eight people still have no access to clean, safe drinking water from the lack of hygiene and sanitation. More of half the diseases in the world are caused by unsafe drinking water. Diarrhea remains the second leading cause of death among children globally under five. It kills more children than AIDS, malaria, and measles combined. Another way that it is affected is poor health overall and nutritional status. Now that you know a little about how it affects health, I'll move on to education. 443 million school days are lost each year due to unsafe drinking water. We all know the importance of education, right? Well, in just one day, more than 200 hours are consumed by children and women collecting water for their domestic use. The lack of education has a huge impact not only on one's life, but as the economy, but not only on one's life, but in our economy as a whole. The countries with the least amount of education are the poorest. What will children do without the ability to read or write or do basic problem solving? Now that you can see the severity of the water issues with education, I move on to the environment, of course. The less fortunate depend on their natural environment for daily survival. Water is a, 
sustainability of most ecosystems. However, people in other countries have little or no control over these recent resources and often suffer harsher consequences than me and you. More than 80% of the sewage in developing countries is discharged and untreated, and it's polluting our rivers, lakes, and coastal areas. The UN estimates that by 2025, 48 nations with a combined population of 2.8 billion will face freshwater stress. Speaking of the 2000s, a Canadian corporation purchased mining interest in Gifford Pinchot Natural Forest, which is adjacent to Mount St. Helens National Volcanic, Volcanic Monument near the headquarters of Green River. The company began active exploration of the area and it intends to continue drilling this year. Now this is here in the United States, in Washington State, so it does affect me and you as you can see. Mining in the area will endanger the health of the local community and the environment. The Forest Service should acquire the mineral rights in the National Forest and Congress should designate the Upper Green River area as wild and scenic. That will protect the Green Rivers, free-flowing nature, water quality, recreational opportunities, and also other national significant values for future generations. So now that you're informed, if you aren't already, get involved. There's plenty of things we can do to help. I recently went to a benefit called Give Water, Give Life. It was a benefit in Seattle at the Convention Center, and this is the pamphlet from it. I will pass it around for you to see. I attended in Seattle at the Convention Center for dinner. The organization was put on by Water First. They help poor water conditions in other countries. There are also organizations like UNICEF, and I was informed by interviewing Ray Hanwell at the Public Health Department, who works in the environment section, that actor Matt Damon is actually opening up an organization to help the inkwells in Africa. So that's really awesome. Now that I've shared with you the three main things affected by the water issues in and out of the country, which are health, education, and environment, I will leave you with a quote by Benjamin Franklin from the Poor Man's Almanac in 1746, which he stated, when the well is dry, we know the worth of water. Thank you very much, and drink up. <laughs>